research and discovery. Futurists. Already familiar characters in countless sci-fi movies, humanoid robots are well on the way towards stepping off the silver screen and into daily life. But before they can move in as helpers and companions, man-shaped machines have to get a grip on the human world, learning to handle even the most fragile objects with care. This is the iCub. It's a humanoid robot which has been developed by a European consortium. It's the size of a child and can be used to study cognitive tasks. We have tactile sensors for the robot entwickelt and have them installed in this robot. We have 48 sensors in the hand installed and 12 sensors. We built tactile sensors into the robot's palms and fingertips, and this experiment makes use of them. The robot will take hold of a cup, which is very fragile and can easily be destroyed. But with this type of sensor, it can grasp it gently. Using its new artificial skin, the eye cup can measure and control the pressure exerted by its fingers, even though the hand is easily strong enough to crush the plastic cup. Robots have been used for a long time, just in industrial applications, where interaction with humans was not a task. Now we believe it's time to think of robots that can interact with humans for different kinds of tasks, where the roles of humans and robots are both important, like in the domestic environment or for therapeutic operations. The development of robot skin is fundamental to its interaction with the environment and and humans, and it is critical to ensure that it operates safely. The iCubs, assembled here at the Italian Institute of Technology in Genoa, are the guinea pigs in a European research project aimed at giving robots a sense of touch. And a sense of touch goes hand in hand with a sense of feel. At the University of Hertfordshire, just north of London, they've been teaching their robot to differentiate between the feel of a friendly pat and a hostile punch. They hope it could help to treat autism. Casper is a minimally expressive robot, how we call it. What this means is that it is a child-sized robot um, that has been specifically designed for human-robot interaction and in particular more playful interaction. So the idea was to build a robot that people are motivated to play with, similar to how they would play with a child. In the application area of uh, autism therapy, for example, how can you use a robot in order to uh, design games, so to design scenarios and interactions of the children with the robot that may satisfy some therapeutic objectives, like, for example, teaching children about appropriate tactile interaction, and that's a key uh, point in the RoboSkin project. Scientists believe autistic children who have trouble communicating with other people might feel more comfortable with a robot's predictable reactions, leading to a better understanding of how interpersonal communication should work. We want the Casper to either encourage or discourage specific uh, behavior, tactile behavior of the children, as you see in the, the child uh, uh, tickle it. You get a positive reaction, but also if the child will be harsh on the robot, something... Ouch. This hurts. Something, ouch, it hurts. Something like this will, uh, will discourage him. The seemingly natural reactions to physical contact are triggered by patches of artificial skin embedded under Casper's face and clothes. The soft, flexible sensor elements are wired to the computer that constantly interprets pressure patterns triggering his movements in response. On each of the patches, um, you have um, 72 pixels, which is the sensing points, actually. And when you touch it, you can see the pressure uh, as displayed on screen. If you press harder, you can see a higher intensity of a red color. If you leave your hand, it displays nothing because there's no pressure. <laughs> Just how closely a socially acceptable robot should mimic the appearance and behavior of a living person is a controversial question that the scientists believe should still be closely researched. 
Many people predict that there is a huge future for robots and that's why it's very important that people study interactions with such machines because what you don't want is to have uh, such machines on the market and they've never really been properly tested with people or during the design of the robot they ha no one has ever asked people what they really want and how the robot should perform a certain task. So it's very important to study human-robot interaction uh, before these systems are really prevalent and millions and millions are in people's homes or houses or working environments. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. See you next time. iCub and Caspar owe their newfound abilities to these capacitive touch sensors. It's just one of several pressure-detecting technologies that are being tried within the RoboSkin project. This is a set of capacitive sensors that works very similarly to the touch screens in modern mobile phones. The difference here is that this skin needs to flex like this, so it has to be made from pliable materials. It's easy to glue the mesh of triangular sensor elements over large areas of the robot's body. After being covered with silicon foam, the capacitors can measure the pressure difference when the thickness of the soft layer changes. But combine a sense of touch with others, like vision, and a robot's capabilities can be multiplied many times over. Playing ball might seem straightforward, but it needs extremely complex hand-to-eye coordination. But with some well-placed sensors, robots need not feel left out of the game. This robot is using information about the color and shape of the object, so it's able to identify the ball and compute the position of its center and size. With this information, it determines the distance and directs its hand. In this experiment, we use the tactile feedback to decide when the fingers should stop grasping the ball. It's simple behavior for us, but very complicated for the robot. Robot skin might have a long way to go before it can match its ultra-complex human counterpart. But already, electronic elements are providing machines with a halfway decent substitute for the human sense of touch. And in the end, that should make it safer and easier for robots to take their place in the ever-changing human world.